Namaste. I welcome you all to the session of Guru Bodha. We have with us Dr. M.B. Guraja sir and Dr. Raghuram sir. So I dedicate this and all of my works at the holy feet of Dr. H. Chandrasekhar Udupa. So this class is made live for the Easy Ayurveda weekly class subscribers. If you are not subscribed, please go to easyayurveda.com slash video dash classes. Uh, for the YouTube, the link will be there in the video description. All previous classes uh, will be uh, are getting uploaded here. So coming to the question of uh, uh, first question uh, is Sama Pitta in Sama Pitta the Sanskrit verse says Amlam the Pitta acquires sour taste. So can you say Amla Pitta is basically a Sama Pitta condition and not a Nirama Pitta condition or in other words Sama Pitta is a synonym of Amla Pitta or the same or are they different how to see it clinically uh, Dr. Raghuram, sir. So last time itself, we have discussed certain things about uh, uh, Sama Pitta and Amla Pitta. So uh, again, it's a big confusion to uh, when we say uh, are seeing this particular topic from clinical diagnosis perspective. Uh, uh, it is difficult as the Acharya himself has said. I'll try to make uh, a small clarification as far as possible uh, related to all the questions and sub questions. First of all, let us focus on a word called as Anna Visha. Anna Visha mentioned by Master Charaka. So this word Annavisha also has been simulated with uh, Ama. Okay, they are they're considered as synonymous. So Annavisha means that part of the food which has not been digested properly by the Agni and that converts into an intermediate pro product which is harmful for the body. So because it cannot render any positive services to any functions or any tissues in the body. So it obviously is considered as a visha or a toxin or a poison which is not needed for our system. Charaka further tells when this Anna visha gets associated with the different uh, doshas or the body components, it further worsens the clinical picture there. So it may cause various diseases. So this Anna visha or Ama can get associated with Vata calling it, we call it as Samavata, with Pitta, Sama Pitta, Kapha, Sama Kapha. It can go and merge with any Dhatus in the process, we call it as Sama Dhatus. With Malas, we call it as Sama Malas. So that is the introduction which we need to answer the next questions. I would like to re read out a verse from uh, Charaka Chikitsa, chapter 15. So wherein uh, it is said, Samsrujya manam pittena daham trishnam mukha amayan Janayati Amla Pittamcha Pittajancha Aparan Gadan. I would like to focus here on the word Amla Pitta. So the reference is from Charaka Chikitsa, chapter 15, verses 46 to 49. In between that, you can find. Uh, so, wherein Master Charaka tries to tell when Sama Visha or Anna Visha is associated, please focus here. Uh, when Anna Visha is associated with Pitta, it causes so many symptoms. What is Anna Visha here? It is synonymous for Ama. Now let us forget Anna Visha for time being and consider Ama. When this Ama gets association with Pitta, what do we call it as? Sama Pitta. What is Sama Pitta causing? So when Ama plus Pitta is causing Daha, Trishna, Mukha Amaya, so that is the disorders of the oral cavity and face, and Amla Pitta is one word uh, Charaka mentions. Apara Pitta Jan Gadan, very important, and various other Pitta disorders. This is what Master Charaka tells. Focus on the word Amla Pitta there. So, though Charaka has not detailed the explanation of Amla Pitta, nor he has contributed a chapter to discuss Amla Pitta, he, here he mentions Samsrujyamanam Pittena Daha Trishna Mukamayan Janeti Amla Pittam Cha Pitta Jan Cha Aparan Gadan. So when there is association of with ama with pitta, so it can cause various pitta disorders, which can include amla pitta. Here, friends, we have a clean clarification that sama pitta can cause amla pitta. Sama pitta can cause amla pitta. That means to tell sama pitta is causal. It is causal. It is not the effect. Amla pitta is the effect. So here we can tell that. Uh, Sama Pitta can cause Amla Pitta. That is where we answer one question. Sama Pitta is not 
equal to amla pitta and we also have classical references wherein sama pitta lakshanas are also mentioned amla pitta lakshanas are also mentioned separately so that clearly gives a clarification but that these are two are same conditions otherwise our acharyas would have explained sama pitta and amla pitta in the same chapter or same context so here symptoms of sama pitta will be durgandham haritam shyamam pittam amlam ghanam guru why i am reading this shloka i'll come to the point amlika kanta hrut daha karam samam vinirdishe here when we see through the sama lakshanas of pitta mentioned by vagbata in ashtanga hrudaya sutra we can observe one thing hrut kanta daha karam kanta hrut daha karam is what vagbata tells here we get a doubt since there is kanta hrut daha kara and the word amlika has also been mentioned by ashtanga hrudaya kara why can't sama pitta be amla pitta so here again i want to differ it is a contextual explanation in sama pitta condition is a condition wherein durgandham haritam shavam pittam amlam ghanam guru so pitta is generally lagu it has attained purutva ganatva amlatva okay and shava harita durganda so durgandham so when we go to the pitta qualities we see lagu visram saram dravam visraganda is there so but here it has got foul smell durganda all this it has attained which pitta but this pitta which has attained amlatva has not undergone sthana samshraya or it has not gone through the process of samprapti here there is no dosha dusha sammurchana it is only pitta changing its character that's all pitta changing changing its character when it gets association with tama that's it so that is sama pitta in amla pitta pitta gains amlatva just like in sama pitta but it has dosha dosha sammurchana it has its association with the susceptible tissues it damages the tissues of the stomach and intestine get lodged in the deeper tissues therein and produces a disease so sama pitta is a condition as i said in the previous class itself wherein pitta and ama are getting associated and produce amlika kanta hrudahakara so soreness may be there kanta hrudahakara only one symptom has been given there is burning sensation or light burning sensation in throat and chest in sama pitta but when we go to amla pitta we have a set of symptoms there so avipaka klamot klesha tikta amla udgara gauravaihi all those symptoms which we have discussed in the previous session so the same sama pitta condition which starts in the stomach or amashaya may progress towards the sthana samshraya avastha and vekta avastha of the six stages of pathogenesis kriya kala and later manifest with its typical signs and symptoms like avipaka klama utklesha so when these all symptoms are associated with the amlika hrut kanta dahakara in the progressive stage it will be named as amla pitta otherwise initially this is sama pitta only our simple job in sama pitta is to detach sama that is detach ama from pitta that's it by giving a treatment to the ama which is associated with pitta and later if we find pitta aggravated symptoms mild virechana or something can be given and the pitta can be tackled so here there is uh, uh, the condition is easier to treat when diagnosed earlier but amla pitta should and uh, there was a question in the previous uh, uh, session so what is the difference or example so i think we will discuss in today's class also like vyadi pratyanika and dosha pratyanika chikitsa sama pitta is a condition where we need treatment for ama and dosha pratyanika like for pitta but in amla pitta just treating pitta will not be done there the treatment should be vigorous and we should address the vyadi so that becomes a vyadi pratyanika i have given one example already now for the next question also so this uh, i would like to conclude that sama pitta and amla pitta are not identical condition one is a precursor one is a disease one is a condition one is a disease in one condition there is association of ama and pitta in another condition there is there is dosha dosha samurchana the disease process is taking place and the amla pitta has its own sign, uh, set of signs and symptoms uh, pathology of amla pitta so how to differentiate them uh, clinically as yes, the signs and symptoms of sama pitta and uh, uh, amla pitta itself will uh, help in differentiating so sama pitta without any absence with the absence of amla pitta lakshanas is sama pitta 
and in a progressive stage when uh, the disease runs a longer course and avipaka klama utklesha all those things are associated in the urdhva rado marga whatever we have discussed last time uh, according to that uh, amla pitta can be diagnosed so coming to the pathology of uh, amla pitta is the last part of the question which has been asked there so we need to go to the sampraptya of amla pitta and see that uh, again according to the kriya kala so pitta has got accumulated in uh, varsha rutu in varsha rutu there is monsoon there is what uh, rainfall and due to that amlatva the soreness is developed in the foods medicines and everything so the persons who are taking those pitta accumulation will take place not in everybody in the consecutive season next season that is sharad rutu uh, that pitta anyhow will have a tendency to aggravate but in spite of that if the person consumes the viruddha ahara etc etiological factors mentioned in the amla pitta prakarana and if the person is having the predisposing condition like he has taken the etiological factors in the previous rutu that is varsha rutu so the person will be more susceptible to get amla pitta here so here due to the accumulation of pitta in varsha kala and uh, in sharad rutu the condition the season favoring the pitta aggravation the person is still taking pitta aggravating uh, factors so the accumulated pitta will undergo further aggravation and it will get amlatva and then amla pitta is uh, manifested it goes through the chain of uh, uh, sampraptya that is uh, kriya kala it gets lodged as i said in the tissues of stomach and intestine and produce amla pitta pittam vidagdam so here vidagda as synonym is also prakupitam isn't it so here further aggravation so vidagda is not only the pitta gets burnt and gets amlatva the pitta gets severely aggravated in comparison to the previous season so another question may be there whether other than sharad rutu if amla pitta can manifest this sampraptya or the pathology will is explaining that ten, uh, sharad rutu or the autumn season is the more most prominent season wherein amla pitta can be uh, can be manifested as a disease but it can happen where see in other conditions also in other seasons also there is a possibility if there is if a person is used to take pitta prakopaka ahara viharas and it goes on accumulating and it goes through the stage of pathogenesis and there are many other conditions which are supporting or favoring the disease condition amla pitta can be manifested or if the pre existing amla pitta condition can be triggered there is an argument uh, that you know previously this amla pitta or gastroesophageal reflux disorder that we call or in layman's term gastritis so the the disease has become so common that even there is a common layman's uh, term is there's like gastritis people say that this is this was not so frequently uh, manifesting in ancient times but because we started using more and more chilies uh, you know more and more gastritis uh, thing uh, came because the, the chili came from south america Uh, is that true or uh, do you have any other theory regarding this sir see there is a lot of uh, difference in theory and uh, practical what we understood as said by our acharyas probably may be holding good for those days in present context may not be 100% holds good or even beyond that the reason is previously our acharyas and the customary was that everywhere the people used to consume the food and diet as per the rutu and there was a concept of going for in between there is a fasting we forgot all those things there is no question of fasting nowadays instead of two meals a day we are taking almost four times something and in between also we are eating and the machine is on already digestion process started in between we will pour one cup of tea one two biscuits so something like that we will be adding and adding and adding then how can the system can function in proper way then it has to show its uh, uh, regurgitation in the form of a disease so we need to understand where we are making a mistake the mistake is that we are adopted to such a type of food habits that a uh, chalega attitude means we can have it anything anytime moreover lot sort of pungent principles we are consuming just because of the sake of taste moreover a lot of uh, spices and also fermented items alcohol tobacco there are plenty of issues which can trigger the pitta at the level of stomach we need to understand there are three important factors there is a normal pitta there is a sama pitta 
and there is amla pitta very typically where there is pitta is there it's having its own lakshanas but it won't cause any disease as such then we will try to understand that with the statement pittam sasneha tikshnoshnam lagu visram sarandravam with this statement these are the basic uh, qualities of pitta we try to understand that but when the same pitta increases it is prakupita pitta then it has got its own lakshanas in that condition it has more burning sensation because of tikshnata has increased whereas when it comes to amla pitta or sama pitta lakshanas attain then asama mixes with pitta causing lot of lakshanas where hrutkantagaha amlodgara all these lakshanas will come so if you observe the basic uh, qualities of pitta in that the last four characters lagu visra sara drava these four characters definitely alter in case of amla pitta particularly in case of amla pitta instead of lagu the pitta attains guruta visra gandhi that is actually having a some smell it's a natural smell of pitta but it becomes further durganda yukta because of mixing of ama then saraguna it slowly reduces and dravatva also dries up so when these four important qualities of pitta getting altered then we end up in amla pitta and the causative factors are there are plenty we don't know exactly what the reason other than that there are plenty of uh, things like anxiety stress food habits continuously eating whatever throughout the seasons or any season the thing which we really like to eat it so all these things have just thrown away the system into such a ditch that it will irritate and aggravate and many times uh, amla pittas are very commonly seen and if you observe if we go by the text and definitely we should have amla pitta only during varsha rutu as a principally the um, if we consider but presently it is not so throughout the year 365 by days we will get a patient of amla pitta so it's very clear that pitta prakopa aharas may be anything which is fermented highly ushna highly tikshna pungent katu or amla dravya or it may be ati uh, sneha yukta dravya something like that we are be eating continuously tobacco alcohol and even the medicaments many gastric irritant materials all these will cause lot of changes in the pachaka pitta present in the stomach which leads to the manifestation of amla pitta yeah only one point just i wanted to add a point here so we should be conscious about what we eat what we drink and how we live so what is our uh, so everything is there in ayurveda so how genuinely we try to at least inculcate certain things if not all into our lives makes a big difference ayurvedic approach to knee troubles uh, mc mcl allows tibia to slip immediately i along with guruja sir have covered entire arthritis and various knee troubles uh, deta- detailly so any any thoughts sir mcl ligament uh, allows tibia to slip immediately probably due to accident or any structural deficiency there it may be a recurrent dislocation of the knee joint or patella maybe because of some tear in the ligaments it may be anterior cruciate ligament or medial cruciate ligament something like that the cruciate ligaments or some other ligaments might have partially broken that may be causing thing or there is some other issues we need to go with the mri findings to conclude that what can be done if it is a partial tear or something like that then we can go for uh, murivenna and such type of things for the dhara continuously and even uh, janubasti type of things and internally uh, gandataila and such type of drugs definitely it will going to help but if it is a total tear medically yeah. and manage it it should be addressed by surgical can genetically modified foods be a contributing factor with gastric afflictions yes uh, out of all the things uh, you know this is also uh, maybe a contributing factor how about stale food sir in western countries people cook for 5 days and refrigerate it and eat every day can that cause amla pitta raghuram sir please can definitely cause amla pitta so again according to the practices we tell uh, whether it is desha satmya we can speak about desha satmya those people are used to keep in refrigerator and take uh, almost every day so that may be desha satmya over a period of time uh, again yes uh, in spite of being desha satmya how regularly you are doing so it's it's a practice so over a period of practice 
and also it depends on lot of other things uh, the aging factor the immunity of the organs and the other causes which are predisposing there the supporting factors for the patient the person or the support there are supporting factors for uh, the aggravation of doshas or the susceptibility of the disease formation climatic conditions lot more things join together and can worsen the condition so anything uh, which is done as a practice if it becomes satmya it is okay as long as it is not troubling and if the immunity of the gut immunity is uh, cooperating with that particular person if the gut immunity is lost so whatever it is there so according to uh, the logic uh, so the stale foods and the preserved foods probably their quality their gunas everything will be changed so unless uh, the satmya of that particular person desha satmya oka satmya everything uh, supports that particular person it is uh, well and good so if it is not definitely it is a trouble uh, next question i would like to add one point here stale foods i mean uh, the cooking of food for one day and keep it in the fridge and uh, every time when they want they take it out and um, keep it in the oven and uh, immediately making it warm and consuming uh, this type of thing is itself is very clearly contraindicated by vagbhata very clearly says vanjana should not be repeatedly heated very clearly said one should not repeatedly heat the vanjana anything which we take along with the rice or the staple food uh, which is uh, say something like dal chapa I mean, uh, sambar or anything like that that should not be repeatedly heated if you repeatedly heat it it will lose its qualities and as well as it may also cause a problem so that needs to be understand one point second very clearly we are trying to adjust everything and ultimately we are giving only two importance two things to the importance of the food as per as per my concern is very clearly we are uh, believing in dressing the food means how it appears and how it tastes only two characters are taken care of whether what is its influence on the doshic balance or something like that it is totally left and that's the reason we are only worried about the appearance as well as taste which is we can take anything and everything which sounds good in these two characters looks good taste good uh, yes sir definitely i mean food has to look good otherwise how can i post in instagram uh, <laughs> and also this even even the uh reheating a lot of not only food even reheating of water once boiled it should not be boiled again has been told ragram sir please yeah so regarding this i would tell uh, say desha uh, satya again see all these things uh, are trouble foods itself like stale foods preserved foods canned foods all those foods and uh, people may argue in that favor also belonging to different geographical conditions the geographical areas uh, so this is we are not having any trouble with those things so they can tell but over a period of time and with practice definitely these things are uh, will pose a problem one example i would give uh, like to give is a place where i belong to born and brought up at bellary so it's a place in a very hot place in uh, karnataka people used to tell that there are only two climates in bellary hot summer and very hot summer so in spite of that people eat a lot of mirchi bonda so if uh, there are people coming from uh, different uh, uh regions and geographies here i will translate that so there are chilies there are chilies very hot spicy chilies they are prepared with some flour so we call it as it is a delicious dish dish so uh, mirchi bonda all those who belong to india will be knowing at least south india so even north india so that is very very spicy which is uh, uh, decorated uh, for the chili is hidden inside but still we are eating chili lot of chilies are eaten in our belt like in bellary in spite of having a very hot summer what would we expect a plenty of cases of gastritis and uh, uh, reflux diseases or uh, grd conditions or lot more conditions even a peptic ulcer is uh, there so what i have seen is so in our ayurvedic uh, college we used to have a very good opd plenty of cases but the least cases were of the gastric conditions least conditions were of gastric conditions and the respiratory conditions especially the asthma and the bronchitis so these conditions were also less now due to pollution and all so when i say i am telling when i was uh, graduating from that particular college and uh, i knew medically to see at, an, at certain things even our teachers were telling so out of all the cases what we are getting less number of gastritis cases or peptic ulcer cases and asthma cases and bronchitis cases seeing this 
we can tell one thing that people are used to eat uh, the chilies since generations see even myself uh, during a holiday or when we used we used to have a cricket match mom used to prepare uh, plenty of mirchi bondas at home at least weekly once or twice so plenty like uh, we four of them myself my father mother and uh, brother we used to eat like unstoppable like uh, so many so at weekends or whenever it is prepared so that was very much uh, a like and food now since i have left that place it has been many years i cannot even tolerate a single mirchi bonda now so because i stay at a different place di- different geographical condition that thing which was compatible with me it is not at all compatible with me right now i so that is how my stomach has been programmed due to the change of geographical conditions so my uh, point is a very hot zone like balari very very hot zone most of the time it keeps above 40 degrees and in that climate you can see plenty of shops dispensing or uh, selling these mirchi bondas every corner wherever you go it is one of the most popular uh, food there so people eat that number 2 one of our uh, senior doctor used to tell why we are not getting plenty of cases of asthma and bronchitis because chili is providing the immunity towards the cold and cold related conditions kapha pradana rogas they are not coming up again so why we are not getting gastritis and gerd conditions plenty we used to get but not in comparison to other diseases very less why so because desha satmya that was our teacher was telling because people here through the generations your father forefather everybody they have been used to eat the chili and your stomach genetically is tuned to tolerate 10 to 15 chilies if you eat in a single day or in a single serving that is not possible right now so there are many factors which come into the play among which the desha satmya is also very important it may change when we start changing geographies i have a lot of clients who come to the consultation who are in us and other places they tell that we have see once we went away from india to us or europe our food habits changed and we started getting problems yes so you cannot expect the same foods there so though the same foods are there so it is prepared in a different way so different different geographical they are grown in different geographical condition the same rice same dal may be there so there are a lot of contributory factors for this gut related diseases everything we need to say the key is the history and what uh, the patient or the client is trying to tell and uh, what answers we have for those questions thank you very clearly we need to understand another point here that when we are young we may eat this viruddha aharas or even tikshna aharas these things somewhat the way we like it so definitely when we eat like that it will support but as we grow old our system also won't support then we need to slow down if you don't slow down then there will be a trouble if you observe that the amla pitta type of conditions are very common in the age group of 20 to 50 you observe that in 20 to 50 this is a very very commonest complaint later on the vata kala will come from 50 onwards then the complaints will slowly shift to other things so we need to understand that every time there is an influence of dosha age vaya agni everything play a role and even the rutu accordingly we need to change that's the reason acharyas have given very clearly the in what season what to do how to do which food should be consumed in along with which anupana you should consume everything they have mentioned when we just skip those things definitely there will be issues yes, yes sir uh, it's quite common that you know patients come and say sir not in a day in my childhood i had fever suddenly i ate one thing and it suddenly started uh, this gastritis so such a things are uh, uh, you know so, so very common with age sometimes we will not be allergic to one type of dish till one point of time and suddenly we become allergic so that is also very common uh, next uh, question so i have read that lady finger is good for osteoporosis is is, is it the pitchla nature sticky nature slimy nature that helps impart the lubrication in the in the joints but is this is the reason why is it good for bone health or does it does this ravya have any other direct way to enhance bone density same question for even uh, plantain and such other pitchla plants right pitchla is one of the quality uh, which supports it. it but doesn't mean that because of only that pitchla quality the lady finger is or the bindi is supporting the osteoporosis condition and uh, making it uh, right one or increasing the density of the bone you cannot claim like that every dravya has its own rasaguna virya vipaka 
and each and every component of the dravya will have its own functions and one will be in synchronizing with the other and will be supporting and there will be synchronized effect and uh, these things will happen not as simply as because of one guna the pichila just because of pichila if it is like that then we can use any pichila dravya to improve the um, conditions of the bone osteoporosis or something like that it is not true we cannot have like that but when it comes to the bindi or lady's finger definitely it supports to some extent but it is not um totally a um, right kind of uh, um, what do you call a wholesome food for osteoporosis to uh, to improve the condition it is not like that and even in case of plantain or raw banana the same thing applies also there dr gururaj which would be the best foods for uh, osteoporosis uh, i mean apart from i know those nourishing foods like nuts and seeds but anything which has a more uh, direct impact uh, milk because those are also heavy to digest so we should limit those also so that's why i just wondering like what would be a good wholesome milk milk and ghee if there is this western students they have this common problem that just because something is heavy it need it need not necessarily be avoided you know i mean if the disease demands heavy foods are also good to take as in case of arthritis directly right sir see when the disease condition is due to vata and that there is a laguta is there or even the age factor also supporting and you are losing the weight and bone health is decreasing in that condition we need to give something which is good to the body which improves the prutvi tattva in the body if prutvi tattva is improved definitely the bone health will increase that's the reason when there is a uh, osteoporotic or osteoarthritis conditions are there many times we use sudhavargiya dravyas like shankha varatika kapartika pravada mukta these type of drugs are used the reason is that they will increase the um, bone density because of their uh, very nature of prutu tattva which is present also in the bones based on the samanya vishi siddhanta they work it in osteoporosis and osteoarthritis condition if the uh, people are practicing especially in these uh, conditions uh, tikta grutas and uh, for oral consumption and also tikta grutha bastis i think will really work out wonders so uh, that has been uh, advised and also that has been practiced in osteoporosis and osteoarthritis conditions in vata predominant conditions tikta uh, grutas orally and also bastis not ubayatah uh, that is neena not simultaneously so according to the context uh, and also the eligibility of the patient so and also according to the condition if vasti needs to be they can be used for uh, uh, anvasana vasti or matra vasti and uh, oral consumption also will help sir if people work how can they eat fresh food at work food is cooked in the morning and taken at work at this yes definitely uh, for this i would like to answer see for what reason you are working that is a primary things which comes to my mind i want to earn something and to make a livelihood and live and keep it something for the future and to maintain my expenses and all those things for that purpose i am working but at what cost if you lose your health even you can't work properly you need to maintain your work i mean uh, arogya first very clearly acharyas has stated arogya is mool and uttama if it is that proper it is in proper condition then only we can work so we need to make some arrangements in some fashion that food should be warm while eating and with little bit of snehatva in that and it should be in a right way it should not be cooked sometime and once again reheated something like that no it should not be done as far as possible try to adopt a situation and bring it as something that you can avoid these things so we need to use this Uh, as a, I mean, we need to open our eyes regarding uh, with uh, very clearly for these problems. Of course, it's a genuine concern how it can be managed. We need to work work out on that part how to how it best can be done in that. Otherwise, by consuming the same thing in because of the constraints and ultimately ending in trouble and some disease, then you have to uh, eat lot of uh, medications and you may be even um, losing. Um, I mean, um, putting a leave for your work. Are your, your work hours may be reduced. So many issues will be there. So in order to avoid a future problem, it is better to keep it at the very first level that health is very important. See, that is the reason when there is a mission continuously, it is working. We don't allow it to work continuously. We give a, a periodical maintenance. 
so like that the periodical maintenance should be given to the body also and one of the important periodical maintenance is proper food at proper time so for that purpose we need to go for in such a way that food should be fresh and warm okay this is the question i have asked uh, norm so normally we cook early morning at 6 o'clock fresh fruit fresh vegetables everything is absolutely fresh like ayurvedic style with on the on the earthen pot however we pack it in the hot case like a hot boxes where the food it stays for 5 to 6 hours in the hot case you can say obviously it's a 5 hours old food but it's kept in a in a in a hot case then we take the food around like 12 ish 12 o'clock so do you call this is a fresh food or yes there is a already delay of 5 hours of 6 hours but that obviously you can't cook in the lunch time or that's the problem you know uh, we you have to cook in the morning and you take it to the office and you eat over there yes no reheat is there because the food keeps it uh, hot until 6 hours so in that condition what are the chances that the food is not bad for the health or for the body when you are cooking in the morning and keep eating in a hot box like that and consuming in the same day i don't think so it is considered as a stale or stale food so what we are talking about the food which is been prepared on sunday when we had all leisure for the next week entire week something like dal cooked in big vessel keeping in there and every morning we are taking some portion of that dal and cooking it once again reheating it and using it and remaining keeping inside the fridge that we are talking about so that type of thing should not should not be done so that need to be avoided and what is the condition you are explaining it's absolutely workable and it is no harm for that there is no harm in that morning cooked and you eating at the 12 o'clock it's not a big issue no issues with that and also there is a this this story from one of my uh, friends from singapore so she got she got married and you know her husband is an engineer in a singapore uh, farm so they were eating their restaurant food and she she went there and she she was not having any job so one fine day for all the friends of that engineer she cooked food and they liked it and they started ordering it from her only so every problem has kind of a solution only uh, and every problem is a business opportunity to be explored uh, probably you know some you know some kind of uh, arrangement can be done even when fresh food even from home is also not possible next is again one of the basic concepts so somebody wanted to ex- explanation regarding dosha pratinika chikitsa vadi pratinika chikitsa and ubaya pratinika chikitsa with the examples uh, or to our kc expert raghuram sir so these are basically the terms dosha pratinika against dosha vadi pratinika against or antagonistic to disease ubaya pratinika which are uh, for both so that which serves to balance the dosha that which serves to uh, eradicate the disease and that which can do both so generally uh, we consider that uh, most of the vyadi pratinika uh, medicines or the therapies or the diets are also ubaya pratinika so generally it is a consideration like that most of them do uh, with certain exceptions so having defined those things i would give allow uh, to give few examples here easy examples which we can understand so swedana is uh, one of uh, the treatments in uh, ayurveda so which is uh, the sudation process or uh, the steaming process or the sweating therapy we can call it as which is given before the panchakarma therapy and also is used as an individual therapy like a pradhana chikitsa and also as a purva karma for the some of the panchakarma measures so here while explaining swedana it has been said that it is one of the best remedies for vata okay so it can be administered with and without a snehana so in certain conditions i am speaking about the external uh, therapy which is done through the sudation process so here if we consider swedana to be the best treatment for vata it will be considered as the vata pratinika chikitsa but swedana may not be a treatment for vata disorders like a pakshagata or ardita or ekanga vata whatever it is there if you ask whether swedana can tre- cure the disease may not be so because more approach more aggressive approach and more complementary so everything the medicines the diet everything the lifestyle everything should be plugged in and swedana is one of the components of the vata treatments so swedana swedana is 
here is moreover a dosha pratinika chikitsa and not a vadi pratinika chikitsa it will not cure diseases if it is a simple like uh, stamba and gaurava so swedana can relieve stamba and gaurava if it is a little bit of heaviness so even if you take a hot water shower so if you are feeling lethargic and body is heavy if you take uh, uh, hot water shower so it it, may, it will come down so that is only that for the temporary manifestation but if it is a vata vyadi an established vata disease definitely swedana is not going to be a single remedy so that is why swedana is an example of dosha pratinika here and not for vyadi pratinika like for pakshagata or ardita any treatment another example will be the shunti use of uh, ginger zinjibar officinal uh, all of us know so we pre prepare decoctions it uh, it's uh, uh, infusions are used uh, in so many conditions especially in uh, fevers and cold conditions which are caused due to vata and kapha predominantly when i am seeing a fever which is caused by kapha here so kapha is the dosha fever uh, jara is a disease already which has where the kapha is having a predominant role now as a home remedy when i prepare a decoction or infusion of uh, shunti or the ginger and give it to the patient the person may be relieved by relieved from the kapha or the kapha symptoms like coldness heaviness etc but that shunti may not totally relieve the fever it will not relieve the fever because there a vyadi pratinika chikitsa so some medicines which act on the samprapti or the pathogenesis of the fever and cures the fever is also needed so here shunti kashaya or the ginger decoction may be it is a dosha pratinika which is acting on kapha or vata or cold related conditions cold factors which have caused the uh, jara and it is helping in reducing the cold example a fever with chills and cold and running nose stuffy nose and those conditions so these conditions may be removed but the jara is formed from a different pathogenesis it is not going to cure the jara so here shunti can be considered as a dosha pratinika or hetu pratinika but definitely not the uh, vadi pratinika another example i would like to take is mamsa rasa so which has been indicated in vata ja jwara so the fever caused by vata so here the meat soup is used meat soup is anti vata it will relieve the vata and vata symptoms but it is not a treatment for jwara so here it is not a uh, what we can call it as a vadi pratinika it is a dosha pratinika but it is not a vadi pratinika similarly going with other examples like vyayama so exercise which is good for kapha and medha disorders kapha and fat related disorders it will relieve them but if we take uh, kapha ja praneha so like uh, a diabetes or a urinary condition which has been caused due to predominant kapha exercise will help in controlling the kapha but it will not cure the disease praneha so that we should similar is the obesity or the saulya or the medha roga so among the benefits of vyayama again it is said deepta agni medha sakshaya deepta agni so it is said to be one of the best uh, uh, remedies to increase our agni but agni related diseases like atisara grahini amla pitta these may not be cured by vyayama so these are uh, some of the uh, dosha pratinika chikitsas likewise very popular madhu gruta taila honey is best remedy for kapha but it may not cure the kapha disorders grita ghee is the best remedy for pitta it may not cure the pitta disorders taila oil is the best remedy for vata it will control vata but it may not cure the vata related disorders so these are all the dosha so coming to the rasas again katu rasa so or the pungent taste is best for kapha it may not relieve kapha disorders pitta rasa is best for pitta but it may not relieve pitta disorders madura rasa is best for vata it will not relieve vata disorders so these are all the examples of uh, the uh, dosha pratinika chikitsa why we should know so where it should be addressed dosha pratinika chikitsas are the best in the first three stages of pathogenesis like sanchaya prakopa prasara where the doshas are slowly increasing in these conditions in and in those seasons where the kapha is tending to increase in a normal person or a person who is prone to those disorders in those conditions dosha pratinika chikitsa can be given now well, let us come to uh, vyadi pratinika chikitsa so i'll take one example putaja polarina antidysentrica is anti diarrheal anti diarrheal so it can be used putaja and putaja preparations can be used uh, uh, for uh, treating diarrhea it is vyadi pratinika here but 
it is kapha and pitta balancing so it can be used in kapha jati sara and pitta jati sara it may not be used in vata ja uh, ati sara so here again specification comes into the question so it cannot be generalized it cannot be generalized so here uh, it cannot be considered as a dosha pratinika because it may not be useful in vata pradana ati sara so and uh, again having said that if the person who is suffering from atisara or diarrhea if we are given with kutaja and the person is also taking kapha increasing and pitta increasing uh, uh, foods and activities definitely it is not going to cure the disease so again the comprehensiveness comes here and the exclusive principles also comes uh, i would like to tell here the formulations and treatments in every chapter the disease related chapter pandu kamala atisara rakta pitta jwara in all those diseases prameha kushta me visarpa in all those disorders whatever medicines have been explained like formulations diet protocol and also some exercises and the activities which have been indicated and contraindicated all are vadi pratinika especially those formulations which are used in particular disorders kadira rishta or aragvadas or aragvada rishta whatever has been explained in kushta or amrutarishta jara prakarana amrutottara kashaya whatever simhanada gugulu in uh, amavata prakarana uh, kaishora gugulu in vata rakta prakarana all these are vyadi pratinika chikitsa now there may be a question whether they they are also dosha pratinika so generally yes so because the doshas are caused by doshas itself here we are trying to address the fourth and fifth stage of the pathogenesis that is the sthana samshaya and vekta stages where they have come from they have also come from the same doshas the dosha lodgement in the dhatus and then the disease has been formed here the vadi pratinika chikitsa is looking to break the samprapti and cure the disease whereas dosha pratinika is looking towards controlling the doshas and balancing them so that is the basic uh, difference here vadi pratinika all the medicines formulations diet everything which has been recorded and advised in particular prakaranas of diseases can be taken as vadi pratinika chikitsa itself and the last ubaya pratinika if something can act as both they are terrific for us if something we give it acts in controlling dosha and also the controlling the disease then it is uh, the best thing a, one example i would uh, love to give is dashamula kwata dashamula kashaya the kashaya or the decoction which has been prepared with dashamula has been indicated in vata ja shrota or the swelling which has been caused by vata so here dashamula is anti vata anti shota so ubaya pratinika both so it is helping in it is opposite to the nature of dosha which is causing the disease it is also opposite to the disease it is trying to break the samprapti and cure the disease so one arrow two shots is ubaya pratinika so dashamula is both vata hara and shota hara here uh, likewise takra or the diet uh, that is the buttermilk which has been uh, mentioned in the grahini chikitsa it is kapha vata hara so it is good for kapha for vata and it is also not only a diet but is also a medicine for grahini not a progressive condition where medicines are required of course with medicines you need to give so that is uh, about uh, one of the uh, best uh, diets which has been prescribed in grahini which is acting biphasic that is uh, dosha pratinika and vadi pratinika that is why it is uh, ubaya pratinika last but not the least chikitsa sutras there are some principles for treatment of particular diseases i would like to mention one langanam swedanam tikta deepanani katunicha okay virechanam uh, snehapanam uh, so ama marute so that uh, that is uh, the chikitsa sutra which has been uh, mentioned for ama vata langanam swedanam tikta deepanani katunicha virechanam snehapanam vastayascha ama marute so here we can see this is a, this is ubaya pratinika here when we take individual components here langana so that is uh, the different methods of langana here we will take it as fasting for better understanding or partial food taking or starvation partial starvation so langana is more over the best one for kapha and ama conditions here individually given langana may not be acting as ama vata hara swedana individually given may not be acting as ama vata hara tikta deepa katu dravyas or the aharas having tikta deepana and katudravyas may not be again helping in totally treating the amavata 
Virechanam snehapanascha vasthayashama martha. See, the comprehensive use of all these things timely, situationally, according to the stage of the disease. Langana, Svedana, Tikta Deepana Katu, and Virechana, Snehapana, Vasti. All these things comprehensively and skillfully used in particular stages of the disease after understanding the pathogenesis will help in not only relieving Ama and Vata, but also will cure the Ama Vata disease. So, likewise, there are treatment principles mentioned for different diseases. They can be considered as a wholesome approach towards the disease, which can combat not only the dosha but also the disease. So these are some of the examples uh, for uh, the Ubaya Pratanika Chikitsas. And uh, finally, I would like to tell the Panchakarma therapies, what we are doing, Vamana, Virechana, Vasti. So they are Ubaya Pratanikas only. So they help in combating the doshas and also will cure the diseases caused by the... So they are the multispectrum uh, specialities, so what we have in uh, Ayurveda. So they help in doing both Dosha Pratanika Vadi Pratinika, that is why they are Ubaya Pratinika. So these are, I think, uh, the most popular examples I have enlisted and given for a better understanding of uh, uh, these three conditions. Thank you. Uh, uh, there was a question on like Ayurveda recommends non-vegetarian food or not. Uh, for the those who are accustomed to non-vegetarian food, Ayurveda doesn't have a problem. For vegetarian, of course, there is no recommendation of uh, non-vegetarian food for a already vegetarian person. Very clearly, Ayurveda never said don't go for mamsa. Very clearly, on many, many occasions, mamsa rasas, mamsa vatyas, and ma mamsa pindas, like that, so many dishes they have explained and even explained the qualities of various types of mamsas. How the jangal rasa mamsa will be having, what is the quality of jangala mamsa rasa, what is the quality of anupa mamsa rasa. So, like that, they are very clearly mentioned. But uh, maybe the reason we, we are uh, unable to understand, I don't know why, just like maybe how the Acharyas have said not to consume Ankurita Dhanya, that is uh, sprouts, uh, probably because of that same reason, they have never mentioned anywhere the consumption of eggs. So much of Mamsara has been explained in Ayurveda, but uh, consumption of egg has been not mentioned anywhere. Last question maybe regarding... Sir, I would like to ask about the ashwagandha. How to take it actually, uh, and especially when the people are at the age of 50 or 50 plus, and and shatavari for women. Ashwagandha as a general uh, general supplement for for anybody and everybody is not recommended for sure. Uh, only if it is required, it's like a hardcore or herb and a medicine with specific actions. It cannot be uh, it it cannot be taken as a general supplement for everyone. It, it uh, you know it, it requires detailed ev evaluation and uh, I've seen people getting gastritis, people having in an increase in anxiety after taking ashwagandha. Though it is an uh, anti-anxiety uh, drug, so lot of analysis and uh, you know case to case basis we need to decide. And uh, ashwagandha is probably not a safe herb that can be prescribed to all. Guruji sir, any comments please? Of course, it's not uh, continuously cannot be taken for a long time, but otherwise. Ashwagandha as a uh, root powder is Rasayana in nature. If it is uh, treated with milk and consumed, probably it won't cause you any other troubles, provided there should not be any pre-existing uh, pre comorbidities with the patient. If it is there, then uh, detailed evaluation is a must before administering Ashwagandha or even Shatavari. I, uh, sir, I would like to ask like uh, how to start uh, our day, like school going children, Usually we give them milk after uh, a night sleep, like after 8 to 10 hours fasting. Uh, I, we have heard that milk should not be given uh, as our first meal. So I would like to know what is the better option even for elder people and children. What to take as our first meal? I don't think so. Anywhere it is mentioned that you should not consume in the morning the first uh, food as uh, milk, which is a band. Because very clearly Acharya said, Dukda is Satmya, Ajanma Satmya. It is good from the younger one to the older one. So there is no harm. But presently there are different type of milks available that is causing issues. Otherwise, the desi milk, what we get, it's very clear and there is no harm in consuming it. And Acharya has very clearly said you need to consume only two meals per day. So then the first meal should be comparatively good one. And because there is a lengthy time of fasting has taken place and while you are sleeping. So it is better to consume a good meal. But we have been subjected to such a fashion that we will just do the breakfast, take some uh, milk and um, fruits and we run to our work. That should not happen. The morning first meal should be 
quite handy. But we need to make in such a sense that uh, we may um, help our child to get up early. From the early uh -huh. childhood only, it may be if we make a practice that at least by six they will be out of their bed. Then automatically they will get fresh and everything fine, and they will eat well, and then go to school. If we, that can be done. So one more point is probably this strictly only two meals a day is not only uh, enforced to children. So Definitely, it will not be enforced to children. See, once again, it is a general practice, but. we need to understand that how our agni is if your agni is quite good enough to consume it no issues there but if your agni is not good then take a back seat wait till agni gets in a proper thing or improve your agni by giving some deepaka pachaka medicines so what about adding these horlicks bormitas and all is that fine to add for their tastes these are all our adjustments what we have made and learned This is not Ayurveda. See, the better you can start by your own uh, badam milk at home. You prepare a badam powder and cook it okay. with the milk and give it. That will be very fine. So, so that's it for today's Guru Vada session.